Welcome to video number 24 in my series of presentations that will attempt to demystify tourism. I'm Dr. Stan McGahey, the creator and narrator of the videos. Their content is based on my experiences worldwide as a professor, consultant, writer, manager, and tourist in more than 80 countries on six continents. Because tourists make advanced reservations and prepay for many of the major products and services they will consume during their travels, such as cruises, escorted tours, airline tickets, hotel rooms, rental cars, and theater tickets, they utilize various components of the tourism distribution system. Tourist needs are many, and the products they will use are scattered all over the world in various businesses, both large and small, using many systems, languages, and currencies. Therefore, the tourism distribution system is quite vast and complex. Components range from direct sales at ticket counters and branch offices to intermediaries and middlemen located online or in major cities, destinations, and gateways. Tourism's distribution channel has three levels. The simplest is level one distribution, in which the tourist buys the tourism product directly from the supplier. For example, buying a hotel room at the hotel's front desk. Levels 2 and 3 are indirect channels. Level 2 distribution involves going through a travel agency, whether it is online or in an office. For example, buying an airline ticket from a travel agent. Level 3 distribution involves a travel agency again, but adds the services of a tour operator or event planner. For example, buying a tour operator safari package at a travel agency. Often, the more complex and more expensive the tourism product, the more levels will be involved, such as a safari that involves multiple flights, multiple destinations, significant expenses, and a great deal of timely coordination. An agent represents a person or a company to others. A typical travel agency represents the tourism products and services of countless companies in all four operating sectors by promoting and selling them to its clients. Retail travel agencies are the traditional intermediaries in the tourism industry. Although today's tourists purchase many of their tourism products online, travel agencies add value through the professional knowledge and experience of their staff, their access to discounts, and their ability to bundle products into convenient money-saving packages. In addition, when unfortunate things happen, and they sometimes do when tourists are hundreds or even thousands of miles from home, a travel agency has the power to help solve a critical problem or seek reimbursement. Travel agencies vary according to their ownership, market, and focus. They can be individually owned, part of a chain or franchise, or an independent member of a consortium. They can be a brick and mortar office, online, or home based with high tech and legal connections to a bonded and accredited host agency. Travel agencies can serve the overall traveling public or they can specialize, such as a cruise-only travel agency. Most retail travel agencies serve both pleasure travel and business travel, but some that specialize in corporate travel make it one of their agency's departments, or they become a unit of the corporation and serve as travel interest as a regular employee of that corporation. Staff of travel agencies are called travel agents, consultants, or counselors. Depending on how they do things, Tour operators are also known as tour companies, tour packagers, and tour wholesalers. Regardless of what they are called, tour operators plan itineraries and prearrange many components. Some specialize in a certain destination, such as Hawaii, some specialize in special interests, such as religious pilgrimages, and some, known as incentive houses, specialize in motivational travel. But most tour operators offer itineraries to various destinations based on the major sites and activities of interest to their clientele. Tour companies primarily operate their own tours under their name, solicit the tour members directly and through travel agencies, and utilize their own guides and other contacts at the destinations they visit. Sometimes they are contracted to arrange tours operated by clubs, alumni associations, and travel agencies. Some tour operators are departments of airlines or travel agencies, but most are independent businesses. As tourists have gained more experience and confidence in their ability to see the world, tour operators have evolved to serve their needs. Some people want to travel on their own, but still want a package tour that provides basic arrangements such as transportation and accommodations. 
Others want a customized tour that covers a specific itinerary on specific dates they will cover on their own, or with contracted guides as needed along the way. Hosted tours provide similar arrangements and independence, but on a set itinerary with a host or guide to help at each of the major destinations. Escorted tours are most elaborate and expensive, as tourists are part of a group that follows a set itinerary with many components included that is led by a tour guide from start to finish. Receptive operators are also known as inbound operators, local operators, and ground handlers. Since it is not practical for tour operators to open offices and staff them at every destination on their various itineraries, they utilize receptive tour operators to handle important details at major stops. Receptive tour operators are also experts in the local culture, language, law, business practices, and tourism industry. Their duties include contracting local transportation, sightseeing and event tickets, hotel rooms, meals, and local tour guides, as well as monitoring the tour quality at the destination and suggesting improvements that will increase satisfaction and profitability. Event planners arrange various types of events for people, organizations, associations, and companies. Like a tour operator creating an itinerary of destinations, event planners create a schedule of activities based on a central theme or purpose at a specific destination and venue. While the site and venue is static depending on the type of meeting or event and its scope and duration, event planners make various arrangements for the event's participants. Among these are airline flights, hotel rooms, meals, entertainment, and ancillary events such as local sightseeing, golf tournaments, and pre- and post-event tours of the area. So event planners work with suppliers in all four of the operating sectors, as well as with local destination management organizations. Companies in every industry want as many effective sales outlets as possible, but it is especially important in such a highly competitive widespread industry as tourism. Since tourists come from many places and search many sources during their travel planning and during their actual travels, it pays to have multiple distribution outlets and locations. The traditional term used is dual distribution. While dual means two, in tourism distribution, think of it as meaning more than one, and indicative of how fast tourism has been expanding since its original channels that were in-house and via traditional intermediaries. Today, the simple divide for tourism's dual distribution is online and brick and mortar, but each of these has numerous possible outlets and they continue to grow. Reaching more customers through more channels means more business and higher profitability, especially when combined with modern revenue management techniques. Keeping track of airline seat inventory and making reservations on multiple airlines throughout the world is a complex task. A computer reservation system, CRS, performs that task. Add in access to hotel rooms, cruises, train tickets, cruises, car rentals, and other tourism products, and now you have a global distribution system, GDS. Travel agencies utilize both of these systems to serve their clients quickly and efficiently. And thanks to the internet, do-it-yourself tourists with computers and smartphones enjoy immediate access to many of the tourism products they need during their travels via company websites, apps, and online distributors. Tourism suppliers can't be everywhere their potential customers are located, so they utilize as many distribution channels as possible, especially online ones. But tourism suppliers still distribute many of their products via traditional travel agencies and tour operators. Travel agencies are like the big box stores of the tourism industry, where customers can buy virtually anything, while tour operators are more like the boutique shops that offer specialized products. Now I invite you to watch video number 24, Tourism Research. Thank you.